You want to see small ones? Boom. All right. Yes, we do get the small lionfish. That's a perfect example. And a, I figured I'd just do a shish kebab here. Boom. Normally, I take them off between shots, but in this case, I went ahead and just kept them on there. Sometimes you actually hit two in one shot, but it's extremely rare, and I don't try to go for it because if you do that, you end up startling one of the other ones and maybe you won't get the shot. Look at all these pretty pork fish and snappers and grunts. You see these great big barrel-shaped things? Those are barrel sponges. They filter out sediment out of the water. They're really cool. Boom! Another lionfish. A lot of lionfish shooting in this video. There's a beautiful blue angelfish. One, two, three angelfish. Come up right above the lionfish so they can't see you. That one. See, I was going to the side a little bit. I ended up missing him. He pulled off of the spear, so got a better position. And this is actually a pretty good size one, so I wanted to make sure to get this one. Pull him out of the hole. Sometimes they, they go in underneath the little ledges and hide out because there's not a lot of cover out here in the deep water. Mm -hmm. Check out this bull shark. Really cool. I'll take a little break from my lionfish hunting to go say hi to this beauty. Now you, whenever you see this big school of fish around you, you know that there's a bull shark close. And then you've got your remoras. So if a remora is following you or swimming around you, take a look around because there's probably a shark really close by. But the unique thing about this shark is that little banner he's got hanging off of his dorsal fin. See that? That is pretty cool. That's, an, that's a remora actually suctioned to the very tip of his dorsal fin, which looks really hilarious. Super cute. So I was allowed to get pretty close. We see that big barrel-shaped body? This is a fairly small one. Only about six or seven feet. They're just curious and you see how kind of spooked him. But he did he did make a turn back, which was kind of interesting. A lot of times they won't even turn back towards you. But that was about it. Just gave him a good looking at and let him go along his way. Here's the nurse shark. Very common. Nurse sharks can actually lay there. They don't actually have to swim constantly like the bull shark does. Uh, there's other fish that can do that same thing, uh, like the leopard shark and the tawny nerf shark and the white tip reef shark, and they're all on the other side of the world where these lionfish are originally supposed to be in the South Pacific. So you go right from above. This is the best way to shoot. Got it. Look at that striking school of yellow pork fish. The coloration is just so neat when you see them in schools like that. You see a lot of sand in between all of these little islands out here. That's usually where we go hunt lionfish because that's where people don't go. They want a nice ledge when you're diving so you can follow it. So if you're going on a charter boat, usually they put you on a big solid ledge and you know you want to have a nice big stretch of reef so you don't run out of reef. But we like to go out where there is no you know big stretch of reef because it's more likely that we're going to find lionfish there. Go where the people don't go, and you'll have better success. That's the moral of the story if you're looking to hunt lionfish. Also, go deeper. People don't go deeper very often, so if you go out to 70 to 110 feet, right around there, you'll find definitely find some more. But you need reef. They are not going to be there if there's no fish to eat. Look at this sock puppet. Very docile green moray eel. Super cute. Moray eels have... Uh, a really cool, they have sharp teeth, whereas there's other types of eels that eat more crabs and shelled creatures, and they have rounded teeth for crunching these shells. So this is a fish catcher for a eel. Look at how tiny, the size of my thumb. So we do get the small fish. Typically, I don't film it all the time, but I've been having a lot of people asking, why don't you kill the small fish? Where are these small fish? We do, we kill every size of lionfish. Watch this little javelin. Boom. And then there's another one hiding there. You see that? You can see evidence of humans all over. Look at this rope. A lot of times people commit crimes. They will anchor on the reef. Now, it is illegal to do this. It's never enforced because I guess nobody cares. But 
when you anchor on the reef, it destroys the reef, obviously. You're putting a big metal object and scraping it along the reef. And a lot of times people get their anchors caught on this rock. And what happens then is they eventually have to, they can't get it out. So they have to cut their anchor line. Look at this red grouper. So sometimes we find some anchors. There's this nice squirrel fish. If we find an anchor, guess what? We don't have to buy one. So that works out well for us. There he is. Look at how the barrel sponge has the hole through the center. It constantly filters through these little holes in the sponge. It's a living creature, the sponge. Look at that little sock puppet. That's a spotted eel, spotted moron. Look at the vase sponges. There's tube sponges. There's so many different types of sponges. Since most of our coral has been decimated since the Industrial Revolution, uh, the hard corals anyway, we have soft corals and a lot of sponges that have taken over. Sponges are going to be more present in an area that has a lot of, you know, need for them. So sure enough, they're going to be here. So all the rock, although it looks kind of dead, it's covered and encrusted in sponges and different living creatures and things. It's just, you can't really tell. That guy got nice and stone. He's actually turned white there. That means I shot him good. So humans have had to be the predator for this fish because it has no predators in this area. In every trip on average, we catch about 100 lionfish, sometimes over 200. But every lionfish represents the death of 5 million reef fish. So if we were to let these fish live in their lifetimes, all of these, these 100 lionfish would end up eating 5 million reef fish. So we're saving 5 million reef fish every time we go out, pretty much is the moral of the story. So the more we go out, the more reef fish we keep from being eaten. And other species, other predators have more food to eat. Um, all these fish can then grow up to be healthy reef fish uh, instead of being decimated by this lionfish. I see this guy? Mm. The red grouper is helping me to mm. find my, my prey here. The red grouper likes to go in the holes and actually spot out what I'm trying to shoot, which is always the lionfish. He's a super big help. Look at him. He's like, he's right here, man. He's right here. Get him. <laughs> the red groupers are so smart. Here's some amberjacks. The red groupers are so docile. They, they can just, they'll just sit there and watch you. They're curious and they're so cute. I really, uh, I really enjoy the company of a nice red grouper. Look at all this pretty fish everywhere. There was so much life. I've noticed since we've been taking lionfish out, we're seeing a lot more small fish and we're seeing a lot more fish in general. So it's just the whole reef is becoming healthier and healthier the more of these invasive species we remove. There he is, my little friend. See, I miss that guy. And look at him go. He's got his spines out to protect him, and I just keep missing. I can't shoot this guy for the life of me. Look at him go. He's I'm I'm into deco right now, so I've overstayed my welcome. My nitrogen is getting pretty saturated, so I ended up having to do a pretty long deco stop because of this little ornery devil. So I ended up getting him, but it was such a fiasco I had to not even film it. But here's a couple more here. See those big sheets of orange and red? Those are actually a weird seaweed from the deep or some, somewhere else. They don't actually grow around here. I think they are probably from really deep in the ocean. That's my guess. But you just see big sheets of it floating by out of nowhere for some reason. It's kind of interesting. Boom. So we nailed a lot of fish today, but unfortunately most of them were small, so we only had about 23 pounds to, to uh, look at how small that one is. Watch, he actually swims out. There he is. I had to shoot him again. He got away from me. I tried to feed him to those trigger fish, but they didn't want anything to do with him. Another tiny one. Let's see if I can get this one. Oh, got him. Perfect. Look at how tiny. That's a 10 inch. Uh, those little barbs are 10 inches long. So you can imagine he's only about two and a half inches. So to shoot that with a big pole spear like that, not to, not to brag here, but it takes some, takes some uh, practice. Later, guys. Thanks for watching.